Muyo Tsukuli, also recognized as Muyo Uchinaku, acquired its nickname from his roots in the city of Uchin. Unfortunately, Muyo never had the opportunity to defend his hometown due to the dire circumstances his family faced at the hands of the Montenegrins. This oppression was part of a coordinated effort within the Kingdom of Serbia, later Yugoslavia, to slowly and systematically expel Albanians from their ancestral homelands. The motives behind this expulsion were disturbingly clear. It involved plans for genocide, ethnic cleansing, and the extermination of the Albanian population. These actions were particularly intensified after the conclusion of the First Balkan War. Muyo, born in 1896 in Urchin, in a family of ship captains and merchants, was raised in the era of the Albanian National Renaissance and Awakening. His formative years unfolded against the backdrop of the increasing unity of Albanian lands and sense of Albanian identity, only to be later divided among the Serbs, Montenegrins, Greeks, and Bulgarians following the Balkan Wars. Growing up during this period, Muyo observed the fragmentation of Albanian territories. Motivated by his patriotism, Muyo's early life was shaped by the hardships endured by his family at the hands of the Slavic occupiers. Forced to abandon Urchin due to economic issues, they sought refuge in Škodra in the mid-1920s, like many Urchinuks of that time. Under cooperation of the government of then-president Ahmed Zogu and Tafo Begucini, the mayor of Urchin, all Albanians from Urchin and its surrounding villages were allowed to travel to Albania and be issued citizenships and passports. Zog wanted to ensure that Albania, though disconnected from its ethnic territories outside its borders, was a place that every Albanian can call home. It was under this pretext Muyo and his family made their move to Albania proper. Little is known about Muyo Chinako's early years, yet is widely acknowledged that he made the pivotal decision to enlist in the Albanian army during the post-World War I era under the reign of King Zog, who later ascended the throne in 1928. Completing his service in the army, Muyo later opted to join the Royal Albanian Navy, staying true to his Ulchinak roots and later settled in the port of Durz with his family. Albania, grappling with the aftermath of World War I, found itself ensnared in prolonged political instability. In an attempt to stabilize, and out of pure necessity, the nation was forced to opt to collaborate with major powers like the Kingdom of Italy in order to see any sort of progress, as it was severely underdeveloped due to the five-century-long Ottoman occupation. Amid this period, Italian fascists, driven by an expansionist ideology, and seeking to recreate the Roman Empire, saw Albania as a strategic conduit to deepen their Balkan ties. Seized the opportunity to establish a foothold in Albania, fostering a complex relationship during the rise of fascism in Italy by infiltrating many integral aspects of Albanian life, like its infrastructure, banking, and economy. King Zog, pressured by the poverty his nation was facing, was forced to secure loans from Italy, shaping Albania's trajectory over the next 14 years of his reign. Over this span, Italian fascist dictator Benito Mussolini imposed a significant restriction on Albania. Notably, the Albanian army was reduced to a mere 6,000 soldiers, including 600 officers, 280 of whom were Italian and directly commanded from Italy. Furthermore, a defense alliance between the two states emerged, a move vehemently opposed by many, but was necessary in order to protect Albania's borders from Yugoslavia and Greece. King Zog's policy changes led to unrest, marked by protests and rebellions, such as the Fear Uprising, the Kuchova Strike, the Korcha Demonstration, and the eventual ascent of the Communists under Enver Hoxha, whom was schooled in Paris, France, thanks to scholarships granted by King Zog. These movements collectively aimed to change and challenge Zogis policies, whose focus was to bring Albania progressively into the 20th century. In 1938, on November 13th, Benito Mussolini announced the impending invasion of Albania to commence in early spring of 1939. 
Prior to this, Italy's policies towards Albania underwent significant changes, including the construction of roads strategically aligned for potential use by the Italian armies to invade Greece. Fascist propaganda resonating within Italy and globally heightened tensions. Meanwhile, in Albania, King Zola consistently refuted the Italians, angering them greatly. On March 25, 1939, Mussolini issued a 10-point ultimatum to Albania, a document that proved impossible for Zog to adhere to. A mere 10 days later, on April 7th, the nation was invaded by the fascist Italian army, forcing King Zog, who was very reluctant to leave as he wanted to retreat with his army to his native Mati region and mount a fierce resistance from the mountains, was encouraged to leave with his wife, Queen Geraldine, and one-day-year-old son, Prince Leka. Like many kings and heads of state during that time, when their nations were invaded by the fascists and the Nazis. The Battle of Durz. During this critical period, Muyo caught wind of an imminent invasion and could not passively witness the unfolding events. He, along with the commander of the royal gendarme, Abbas Kupi, took matters into their own hands, staging a two-day demonstration throughout Durz. Their efforts successfully led to the liberation of the depot where Italian arms were stored by officers already present in Albania. Setting up cannons on the mountains and constructing barricades, they aimed to fortify their defenses. Unfortunately, these defenses were prematurely dismantled by officers and individuals who betrayed their cause by siding with Italy. Undeterred, Muyo and his companion, Hamid Dolani, seized rifles and mounted cannons in the Venetian Tower, also known as the Round Tower. Anticipating an unprepared Albanian populace, the Italian army had planned a seemingly straightforward expedition. Muyo, along with five of his loyal friends, Hajid Tabuku, Hussein Kotsi, Ibrahim Osmani, Isak Matlia, and Ismail Rezi, defended crucial points such as the Stone Bridge of Shiak and the Venetian Tower against the impending Italian forces at the shore. In the ensuing battle, the Italian army boasted a formidable force comprising of 4,700 soldiers, four cruiser warships, four destroyers, four torpedo boats, and ten transport ships. In stark contrast, the Albanian side mustered less than 500 men, with many not directly engaged in the conflict. The Italian warships approached Durz on the morning of April 7th, expecting minimal resistance. Italian troops disembarked confidently. However, their assumptions proved inaccurate. Upon landing, they were met with relentless barrage of rifle and machine gun fire, inflicting substantial casualties. The conflict persisted for several hours, featuring intense hand-to-hand -hand combat. Abbas Kupi and his men, occupying another part of the port of Durz, gave everything they had in defending their country and king. Eventually, the poorly equipped Albania forces began to retreat, and by 9 o'clock in the morning, the Italians deployed numerous tankettes and armored cars on the shore of Durz. The Italian army incurred approximately 100 casualties in the battle, whereas the Albanian losses totaled at around 160. After five hours of intense combat, Muyo and his comrades finally met their end during the last hour of the battle, when their position was targeted and hit by an Italian shell paving the way for the Italian occupation of Albania. In Saranda, Mitro Dimitrishka displayed remarkable bravery in the face of the invasion. In Vlor, the resistance was upheld by Amit Metai and Amit Hoshko. Similarly, defiance persisted in Lezh, Shkoder, and numerous other coastal cities until capitulation was inevitable. On that fateful day, Albania's destiny changed forever and the resounding cry of Lufton Diali, Lufton Plaku, Lufton Muyulchinaku echoed across Albania. The indomitable spirit of that chant has etched April 7th into the collective memory as a day of unparalleled resistance for our nation, where Albania's sons showed Spartan courage against impossible odds. May the names of these courageous warriors reverberate forever across the world serving as a testament to Albania's early and resolute stand against fascism in Europe.